Hey everybody, welcome to Duck Fibers. I'm Melissa and this is my YouTube channel. Uh, today I wanted to pop on and talk a little bit about sweaters. I know it's still pretty hot out, it's the middle of July, um, but today it's actually not bad on the, the deck. It's in the 70s. It's, it's going to be a really nice day today. Uh, I hope everyone's having a, a great week and hopefully this kind of 70s, 80s weather kind of holds for a little bit. It's been really hot and sticky the past few weeks and so today has been really nice to see some of that cooler weather. Um, but fall is approaching and now I think is the perfect time to start looking for patterns and getting your yarn together and getting ready for sweater weather. Um, today I have five different patterns that I wanted to share with you guys and I hope that you find some inspiration from it and maybe want to knit one of these up. Um, so I have five that I'm going to share and they have knit all these up in the past year or so and I'm, I'm really excited to wear some of these this this winter. Uh, this one I just finished actually. Uh, the first one is from Tin Can Knits. It's their flax sweater and it, it's a wonderful pattern. It's so well written. They do a beautiful, beautiful job. And here's the sweater. I did this in the Blue Sky Fibers yarn. It's their extra. It's kind of an Aran worsted yarn. Uh, I wanted to make it a little bit bigger, a little bit sweatshirt, sweatshirt ish that I could just kind of throw on on some of those chilly days and really have something warm and cozy to snuggle up with. Um, so this is an alpaca merino blend from Blue Sky Fibers. In fact, I have a little bit left over here. This is the Java color, kind of a dark brownish color. And I ended up using four colors for this. I ended up using the buttercream and then the this burgundy color is called mulberry wine. Uh, and then I have some brown, some lighter brown called chestnut. And then the, the darker on the bottom is the Java color. And this sweater, it's, it worked up so quickly and so nicely. I, I kind of want to make another one. Um, it has some gorgeous details in the sleeve. So you knit around in your sleeve and then when you come to this part, you, um, the first row you knit and then when you come across it again, you purl again, purl, and then you knit, purl, knit, purl, and it creates that that garter ridge here going down the sleeve and it goes the whole way the whole way down until you hit the ribbing on the bottom um, definitely give this sweater a try if you have not the pattern is so well written she uh, talks about how to not only knit the sweater but how to alter it to fit you to make sure that uh, everything works out it's, it's really really well written and gives you a great uh, beginner sweater if you've never knit a sweater for, I would I would highly recommend starting with the flax sweater from Tin Can Knits. So there's that one. The next sweater that I have is this one. This is the Threshold sweater, and I have a picture of the pattern right here by Melanie Berg. You can see it's a gorgeous, gorgeous sweater, boat neck collar some great pattern details going down the sweater uh, pretty simple to knit up it and actually once you get going with the pattern it doesn't take long to to finish out the body of the sweater i love the ribbing and the boat neck and how it comes down the sleeves when you put it on it drops down a little bit this is a fingering weight yarn this is uh, mid knit craving yarn it's their cinema color and it has these gorgeous gorgeous speckles here i'll zoom in a little on the speckles some black, some blues, some gold. It's, it's really a, a stunning colorway and it's so lovely to work with and so soft. Um, this sweater is amazing. It'll pair well with jeans. It'll go well with dress pants. You can throw it on and it'll really, really be a wonderful sweater for you to knit up. And it has something I'll show you. It has a little bit of that body detail on the end of the sleeves and then it goes into this extra long little ribbing down here. I love it. I love the little bit of detail. So you just knit the whole way down until you hit here and then there's this gorgeous pattern detail at the end of the sleeves. So definitely give this one a try. I might have to knit. See I go back through all these and I'm gonna have to knit another one of them all because they're just they're so much fun and they're so pretty to go through. Too many sweater patterns. Not enough time. All right. The next one that I want to show you guys, I did this one up uh, last March and I was able to wear it a little bit in April, but 
it got a little too warm and so I'm really excited this this fall to be able to wear this one again this is the super simple summer sweater by Hohi Locatelli I know a lot of people have knit this sweater up uh, it's a it's a wonderful pattern it's absolutely stunning it's it's easy to knit up uh, I did this one in the wool folk yarn this is their far base and it's 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 super super soft um, you can see I'll show you in a little detail the yarn it's super soft you can see a little bit of that fuzz on it I cannot wait to wear this sweater when it gets a little bit colder but, and it has gorgeous ribbing on the sleeves um, I started with this wine color at the top and then I ended up finishing it with the wine color on the bottom just to kind of tie it all together and then I use different stripes you can you can use any different color combination that you want uh, you can use all different types of yarn as well I would love to knit this one up in a linen base or a cotton base uh, she has this gorgeous picture of the pattern you can see the side sleeves that she did it's really an amazing stunning pattern I highly recommend this if you haven't knit it up I think I'm gonna knit it up in a linen I have some gorgeous linen that I want to try this in I think it would make a really nice lightweight sweater for the summer or for the fall early fall because there are some warm days in the fall you don't always need the heavier weight yarns um, sometimes a nice linen or cotton is really nice for the fall as well on some of those warmer days so there's that one. All right, the last two I have are cardigans. I have two cardigans I wanna show you guys. Uh, the first one is my go-to cardigan. I wear this almost every day in the winter. Um, this is the Comfort Fade Cardi by Andrea Mowry. And I know there's a lot of uh, knit-alongs that have been going on with this particular cardigan. It's, it's a wonderful cardigan. I have knit it twice, actually. I knit one for my mom for Christmas, and then I knit uh, this one for myself because I loved the one that I knit for my mom so much uh, that I had to knit another one. So here it is. This is the Comfort Fade cardigan. Um, I did this one in uh, different fades. So you have the blue that kind of fades down into the darker blue, just like that. See, my son Zachary came out to say hi. Now he's heading back inside. Um, so this one um, you can do in almost any type of colorway that you want. You can make it a single color throughout the whole sweater, or you can fade it. Uh, and I really, what I really love about this sweater is that as you fade it, you wear it on the wrong side of the, the well, the wrong side, the back side of the sweater, so that this is the knit side here and it's the inside of the sweater but then you actually wear it the other way with the pearl side here and it actually blends the colors a little bit better together so you can see I went down to some darker blue um, for this one I use Miss Babs yarn uh, I use their Yowza it's a lovely lovely base it comes in generous generous yards so that you can really uh, work through an entire sweater I only needed four balls of it to create the colorway that I was looking for and it has this gorgeous collar too that you can flip back or bring forward for a little more warmth around your neck. Um, like I said, I use this every single day. It's such a wonderful go-to throw on cardigan. So that is the Comfort Fade cardigan. And the last one I have is another Andrea Mowry cardigan and it is the throwback sweater. This sweater is stunning. I, I love, love, love this sweater. And I actually knit this with um, two different uh, weights of yarn. So here it is, here's the back part of it. So for the color work, I ended up using a set of Hue Loco in her uh, singles yarn, and I held it double so that I would get the gauge that I needed. Um, the pack of yarn came in 10, 10 little mini skeins, and I was able to use a skein per row or two. So I used each one of these three was a different skein of yarn, the, the blue and the dark blue, and then there's the red. And then down in here, um, I would do certain pieces of the pattern in each color. And you can see as it fades down through, I think I used like three or four colors for this section. And then down here I used uh, three colors for that section. So I ended up using all the different colors for the yoke. And then for the body of the sweater, I used something a little different. I used something from Cloudborn Fibers. It's their Highland Worsted, and this is the Slate Heather color. 
it's a little more coarse than a merino but it's still really really soft and it's going to be super warm and it's going to hold up really really well um, this is kind of worsted weight yarn and i paired it with a singles that i held double for the sweater i ended up having to uh, use a bigger needle size for the color work i when i swatched it it was a little too tight and it wasn't going to work as well so what i did for it was um, i went up a needle size so that my color work would lay a little flatter and then when I got down here to the, the body of the sweater I went back to a smaller size needle to finish off the body of the sweater. It also has this really great ribbing on the bottom here, you can see, um, that really makes the sweater and then once you finish knitting the sweater you go back along the edge and pick up stitches for the collar and for the edging of the sweater and it's this nice little ribbed pattern here. So if you haven't knit this sweater, definitely recommend trying it out. It's a, it's a wonderful sweater. I can't wait to start wearing this this winter and keeping it downstairs when I get cold, throwing it on and really adding um, another layer to, to my look for the winter. So definitely keep this one in mind, the throwback sweater for that. All right, so those were my five sweaters. I hope you guys found some inspiration in them. Uh, I have two other patterns I wanted to show you. These are my next, maybe my next sweater here. Uh, the first one, which I absolutely love, this is Forest Land, and it's by Jen Steinglass. And she has the most amazing yoke sweaters. If you haven't seen her work, I highly recommend hopping over to Rav Raverly and checking out her designs because they really are amazing and one of a kind. So I'm thinking about knitting this one up. I think this might be my Rhineback sweater. What do you guys think? Um, I dyed up this dark blue, the midnight blue color. You can find the midnight blue in my uh, lamping set on my website on Duck Fibers. Uh, but if anyone's interested in this as a uh, for a sweater quantity, shoot me a quick email or comment in the comments, and I can always dye up some more of this to post on the website. But this is what I'm thinking about doing the body of the sweater in. And then I've been dyeing up different minis to try out to see what colorway I might like. I have this green color here that I really like and I think it would look really well with the with the blue so I would do the body of the sweater in the blue and then this green color I think for the color work I think it would work really well although now that I'm looking at it maybe a gold would work or maybe something fun like a magenta I'm not sure so I'll have to think about this for a little bit but I think I'm gonna cast on really soon because I'm really loving uh, this sweater design so let me know what you think in the comments if you think that I should switch out the mini to something different um, and I'll start casting on soon I think. So there's that one. The other one I was thinking about for the fall and I've been wanting to knit this one up for a long time. This is the Novelli by Caitlin Hunter. Uh, this is a, w a wonderful wonderful pattern. I love all the color work on the bottom here. You knit from the bottom up uh, and then you keep on going for the body and then the sleeves. This would be a wonderful fall sweater as well. It's short sleeves, which I think is, is great for some of those really hot days. I know when I was at Rhineback last, it was really, really warm and I was wishing I had a short sleeve sweater. So I may knit this one up as well, or at least start it and see how it goes and uh, maybe wear this one to Rhineback because if it's, a, if it's a little warm that day, then it'd be nice to, to have kind of a more of a short sleeve sweater. So these are my two fall options, ones that I think I'm gonna knit up. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, if there's other sweater patterns out there that you think I should check out, let me know. I'm always eager to see new work and there, as you know, there, there are so many patterns in Raverly. Uh, and thank you all so much for watching. Um, I will link all the patterns that I just showed you guys in the comments below so you guys can access uh, them and check them out. So thank you all so much for joining me. Um, and Next week I have some sweaters that I've started that I'll show you guys. Um, I haven't decided if I should rip them out or if I should finish them, but you can let me know. I will definitely show them all to you next time. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.